Hello everyone and welcome to the final part of this series. Today we're going to be going over the animation of this character right here. I'm going to be showing you how to use the control rig, how to reference it in, how to do a little bit of key poses, timing, in-betweens, and of course the overlaps and follow-throughs that we need for the tentacles to get this very nice wiggly effect. So... Let's go. Very well, my friends. So our character right here is ready. We got our rig ready to animate and ready to prepare. But there's a couple of things that we need to do. And the first thing is you never, ever, ever, and I'm actually going to go full screen here. You never, ever, ever, ever animate on the rig scene. Okay. You always will do something called a reference. We're going to have a separate scene where we're going to be doing all of our animation. And if we at any point need to change anything about the rig, all of the scenes that are referenced will be be updated as well because otherwise it's just it's just a mess now before we do that jump i do want to create something else here on this scene because when we reference the scene in everything that is in this scene will be referenced on our new file uh this render so i'm just going to press h to hide it and i'm going to go to select all by type nerf curves there we go and what i want to do is i want to create something called a quick selection set so instead of having to manually select all of the curves i'm going to create a set that's going to allow me to have a button and just click on it whenever i need to set a keyframe on every single curve so i'm going to grab everything here i'm going to go to create and then set quick select set and i'm going to call this mind layer control hit okay and as you can see over here on the outliner we're going to have this element and it's going to be a very easy way to access all of the curves when we need to select them and animate them now, the cool thing about this, so let's go to the animation tab, is that we can go to select and then quick select set. And as you can see, this is going to be right here. And I can press control shift and click to add my mind flare button right there. So this mind flare button right here, if we edit that, you're going to see that it's selecting this thing called the mind flare control. Now, let's save the scene, which is going to be our main rig scene. I'm going to open a new file and I'm going to go file and create reference. Over here, we select our mind flare and we hit reference. And as you can see, everything goes in here. Very, very, very cool. We got all of the textures connected. We got our render setup here in case we want to do a render. We got our quick select set over here. As you can see, all of this selection came in with a namespace, which is like the name of the scene where these things are coming from. So that means that probably this little thing is not going to work. So we can delete this one for now. But you can go back here to select. And if we go to quick select sets, you're going to see that the name changed. That's why it was not working. And if I click on this one, I'm going to be able to select everything again. So anytime I need to set a keyframe on all of my curves, I can just click this button right here, press the letter S. You can see my timeline is up here. I have it up here so that it's not obscured by my camera, but sometimes when I'm working, it's, it's down here. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. We got everything that we need to start animating. Now, the process that I'm going to show you today is a very, very basic process. It's something that we use in animation that's called pose to pose, which is we're going to decide what are the main poses that we want our character to have. And then we're going to be animating the main poses and tweaking the in-betweens, which are the frames between those poses to generate a nice effect. What are we going to do? I want to do a very simple idle. This guy's going to look left. Uh, this guy's going to look right and then it's going to look left. And then it's going to do a snap and look forward. Okay, so it's going to be like a three, four, five second animation. I'm going to go over here to my uh, timeline. I'm going to set this to zero so that we start in the time frame zero. Some animators like to save the key pose here, this one. I'm going to hit S and I'm going to save a keyframe, which is a, a moment in time, right? We're saving the current position of all of the curves, which of course are connected to the bones and the skin. We're saving all of that in the zero position. And then we can go to, let's say, frame 10. We're going to start in frame 10 in this case right there and frame 10 is actually going to be our first frame now why do we do this why do we save a frame on the beginning in case we ever need to come back to the original post and we don't want to like just zero everything out we can just copy and paste that position right there i've seen some people do it some people don't do it it's up to you so on this one we need to start setting our key poses so i'm going to hit s to generate a keyframe here and i'm actually going to go nah, that's fine i'm going to stay right there and what i'm going to do is i'm going to start on the first pose which is this character looking to the left and animation is a lot about posing you're going to spend more time in animation posing your character that you're actually going to be like animating it so one of the things that i want to do is i want to make sure that the tentacles look as kind of like straight as possible i mean i do want to have a little bit of uh, of movement and we are going to be adding a movement but in this particular case since he is still like let's say quite relaxed i want to be able to to just select all of these tentacles and make them feel like they're just falling falling down now you can see there's a couple of like a skinning errors right there. Or did I grab a, a geometry that I shouldn't have? Probably a skinning error. It's really weird. 
Which one is it? No, it can't be. Oh, I was a, it was probably a selection error. So one thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to go show and then on the viewport, I'm going to turn on off the um, joints. We don't want to see the joints. Another thing that you can do is over here on the mask, you can turn off the joints and the geometry. So now the only thing that we can select is uh, curves that this makes it a little bit easier. Now, you can technically create multiple selection sets for each tentacle. So you can have like the right tentacle, the left tentacle, all of the tentacles in each in it, in its own like selection set. Some more complex rigs this is something that you're also going to see in the industry. We'll have special controllers that control the whole like uh the whole section, for instance, you're going to have one controller for each section of a tail, and then there's going to be one like master tail controller that's going to just move or curl the whole tail as a single element. So let's push this one. What the hell? This guy's not rigged. Okay, this is actually going to allow me to show you something very, very cool. Because, of course, this guy is rigged, but what's happening is that for some reason, these elements right here are not updated. So let's say we were to just move these things back, right? And you're like, okay, something's not working here. I'm going to save this scene. We're going to save this as Mind Flayer animation. And this is why having the other scene is so important. We're going to open the Mind Rig scene. And if we go to this guy right here and we move this, yeah, we can definitely see that this thing is not connected. So I'm going to grab this guy. Let's go to our rigging option, Skin. And we're going to do a Paint Skin Weights. Double click here. And let's look for the tentacle. So it's center back tentacle. That should be it. Okay, that one that one is working. Center back tentacle. Or or did I forget to maybe I forgot to to attach these guys? Oh, it seems like these guys are not attached to their that's really freaking weird. Looks like these guys for some reason are not attached to the other guy. That's fine. I'm just gonna delete this guy and uh, don't worry. All of this is under control. This is something that, again, I, I don't usually like to erase or just like edit out all of the like mistakes that I make because it's a good way to learn how to fix them. So I'm going to select all of these guys right here and we're going to run our script. Remember the FK script that we had before, which is this one right here. So I'm going to run it. I think it's because we had double the elements. Uh, so, so the curves were not attached properly. So there we go. Now if we select this curve right here. Let me go to the parameters we should be able to select all of this curves right here and if we rotate there we go the skin is, is now working properly so all of this uh, tentacle controllers i'm just going to go to the circle let's change the radius a little bit to make them a little bigger that should be it uh if you remember we also have a, a way to change the the color there we go i was selecting the whole thing i'm just going to select this thing i'm not going to select the comment right there so that's it. So now, as you can see, this element right here is or should be working a little bit closer to what we were expecting. Of course, this tentacle group right here, we need to parent it to uh, this controller right here. So I'm just going to hit P because if we move this controller right here, we want to make sure that everything moves together. Cool. So we save the scene with all of the changes and updates to this one. And if we open the animation file right now, you're going to see that even though this character is already posed, if we select this guys, we're going to be able to update their position. So this is exactly why referencing a, a file, an animation file is so, so, so important. So we're going to grab all of these guys right here. Let's get them down there. And there we go. So that's going to be our first pose. I'm going to select the whole thing and hit S. And it's going to be a relatively slow movement. I would say like probably like 10, 12, maybe 14 frames. So I'm going to go frame 14 right here. I'm going to rotate the chest a little bit first. This one right here. And then I'm going to rotate the neck. Make him look the other way. Kind of like this. And we definitely want to add a little bit of movement to the tentacles. So this is a principle of animation that we normally have, which is a follow through and overlap, which is when do you move an object, things that are hanging cables, tentacles, tails, they will take a little bit longer to follow along. I'm going to show you a little trick that we're going to do to, to make this thing even more like a little bit nicer. So we're going to go and grab just all of these tentacles. And instead of having them exactly where they are, I'm kind of going to add a little bit of drag so that it looks like they're still like back where, where this character was uh, looking. So in this case, the right. All of these guys, they're going to go towards the back a little bit. You can select some of the upper ones. And the cool thing about this rig is that it's very interesting. Like we got a lot of tentacles. So I'm sure that a, a pro animator could um, could definitely have a lot of fun with, with this character as well. 
grab this one. Move it like this. Perfect. So again, we grab all of the curves and hit S. And that is pretty much the basics of animation. You take a pose, you move it to the other side, and then we play around to make sure that the pose looks nice. So what's going to happen here is this guy's going to turn left, kind of like if he's uh, listening to something. The tentacles are going to follow and, and be like dragged a little bit behind. And then, of course, the tentacles are going to continue. So what I want to do here is, let's say after about eight frames, he's going to kind of like like become a little bit more relaxed like this and the tentacles i'm gonna grab all of the tentacles here oh, let's get rid of geometry again so i'm gonna grab all of the tentacles here and not grab the the curves there we go and i'm gonna zero out the rotation so they're gonna go back to to basic they're gonna recover the the sort of like effect i'm gonna give them a little bit of z that so they rotate down kind of like push them back like this so we're going to have a movement to the side, and then he kind of like relaxes his head a little bit. These guys, these are what we call key poses. Is this boring? I hope not, but it's definitely time consuming. And this is one of the parts, we're going to talk about this in a short very soon, where blocking out the animation is also important. Sometimes when animators are working on this, they won't even like do the scrolling over this side. They will just focus on the key poses. So for me, the animation is I start, as you can see, looking to the left. He's going to look to the side and kind of like go this, and then boom, he's going to do a quick like a jump to the other side. So from this 28, he's going to hear a sound on the other side. And in a matter of like, let's say four frames, which is a fraction of a second he's just gonna like turn around he's not even gonna turn around with his uh, with his chest he's just gonna turn around with his with his head and maybe this is where, where he's gonna look at the camera or something we're not worrying about secondary animation of the eyes or anything right now we're just worrying about the the most important things which are the head and the tentacles now of course in this initial position all of the tentacles all of the tentacles will not be in this place they'll be back and probably to the left right so they would still be kind of like hanging on the other side so this is again where we need to pose our character to make sure that he's moving in the best possible way so, so he's dragging the tentacles back this is why the animation process the 3d animation process is also or tends to be quite slow like um i, I was and, and if there's anyone here that says work in the studio, give me your estimates. Because here in Mexico, there was a studio that was very, very intense with their animators. And they would ask them to do 10 to 15 seconds of like completely polished out animation per week. So in 40 hours of work, you were expected to do um, 15 seconds of animation, which I think it's quite a lot. Usually I've heard more like conservative numbers where it goes to like, uh, I don't know. 10 seconds of animation and sometimes it's not like final polished animation it's just like a like a good uh, a good uh, chunk of the animation but there's still going to be like multiple passes again in big companies like disney there's not only one person doing the animation there's usually one person doing the blockouts one person doing the splining one person doing the facial animation so there's one person doing simulations hair cloth so it's a whole department that works on a, on a single character so i don't know for instance um iron man right like there's gonna be like five or ten different people working on the animation for iron man and each person is going to be animating something slightly different now, I do have this option turned on, which is the auto keyframe option, which is very good because it allows me to just keyframe everything that's moving. But there we go. So now if we check the animation, we got this right here. And what we need to do now is we need to play a little bit with the timing. So whenever I'm animating, especially this sort of like fast animations, I try to break this down into three main stages. The block out, which is this one, the timing so that I can check my time right. And then we start doing a little bit of splining to, to clean up the curves and add the overlaps and all that sort of stuff. So if I take a look at the timing, that's a very, very fast turn. Like 14 frames looks like a very, very fast turn. So I'm going to grab all of the elements right here, press a shift and drag so that I can select all of these keyframes. I'm going to give myself a little bit more, more time, like 38 frames. In this case, it's 28, right? Because we're starting in frame 10. So that's a little bit of over a second because we're animating at 20 frame, 24 frames per second. So if I animate right here, that looks a little bit better. Like that looks a little bit more slow. It still looks a little bit fast for what I want to achieve. So I'm going to give myself a little bit more time here. And that looks good. Now, this snapping here or, or this relaxation here where he's kind of like 
getting a little bit more comfortable. It also looks a little bit uh, fast. So I'm going to give myself like half the amount that I had before. And there are ways in which you can calculate this. But one of the best animator teachers that I ever had said that timing is a lot about feeling. So you need to kind of like feel the animation and feel whether it's too fast or too slow. So again, there are techniques like animating in twos and threes and things like that. But if you develop this sort of like sensitivity to when something is very fast or very slow, that actually really helps. Another thing that I'm doing here is I actually have my frames enabled. So if you go to display, heads up display, I do have my uh, frame rate enabled. Mm, there we go. To make sure that I'm seeing real time and not, it's not lagging. If it's lagging, you're going to have to do something called play blast. I might talk about that later. So we got that nice turn. That's a nice relaxation. I still feel like that's a little bit fast. Like I want that relaxation to be really, really slow to then go into this boom, like super intense effect that we're going to have later on. So I'm going to start over here again, select all of the curves. Let's give ourselves a little bit more time. And then because this like um, effect right here, this swoosh is going to be really, really, really intense. So I'm going to play right here. There we go. Now that does look a little bit fast. So I'm going to give myself like two more frames so it doesn't look so intense and he's breaking his neck. And this is what we get. Let's take a look at the whole thing. One. There we go. That's a little bit better. Maybe a little bit slow, so I'm going to bring back one frame. That's a little bit better. And sometimes that's all the difference. Like one single frame is all that you need. Now, once we have this, I am going to add a, a last pose. So from this one right here, I do want to add, again, not, not like a relaxation pose, but just like a pose, a follow-up pose where he just kind of like goes down here. And the reason why I want this is because at this end pose right here, I again want all of the tentacles to go back to the beginning. So all of the rotation is going to be set to zero. So he's going to kind of like, like go here. The, the, the tentacles are just going to move. And I, I'm going to show you in just a second how to make them flop a little bit more so we get a nice effect. So if we take a look at the animation, we get one, two. There we go. And as you can see, that, that already starts looking like quite nice. We get a, an interesting effect on the whole thing. The tentacles definitely look a little bit stiff right now, but we're going to be working on that to make sure that it look better. So once we have this, we can start working a little bit with uh, graphs, just uh, splining, as we call it. So I'm going to select all of the splines right here. And the first thing I'm going to do, very simple like thing that we can do, is just change this to spline tangents. This is going to kind of like soften them up. It's kind of like adding a smooth modifier to the animation. And that automatically is going to make the whole animation look a little bit more, just, just more smoother, as you can see right there. Um, it doesn't always work like there are some curves on your character that aren't going to work for instance feet I hate using splines for feet because then the feet kind of like start sliding on your character So that's not something that you want to do But in this particular case as you can see right here all of the things are just kind of like flowing and giving us this very very interesting effect So once I have this once I have my splines my timing my position my key poses I like to do a second pose or a second element of um What's the word of, uh, yeah, just keep posing, right? Like I, I just want to go to my key poses and fix, straighten the curves, like change the, the way that the main poses look, because after this, we're going to start doing overlaps. And when we do overlaps, it becomes a little bit difficult to come back to the main poses. So I'm going to pause real quick and I'm going to do a very quick cleanup of the poses. So for instance, on this pose right here, I'm probably going to curve the tentacles a little bit more. Don't worry, I'll show you before we do the, the next step, but I don't want this video to be super, super long. So I'm going to clean some of the, of the curves here. And once we have all of the curves ready, I'm going to show you the final result. So here we go. So now the whole thing is polished, as you can see. And pretty much what I did is I went back to each individual pose and I made sure that the pose looked really cool. This is one of the secrets I will say about animation. Like if you make sure that your key poses look cool on a sort of like stop motion effect, then linking them together becomes a lot easier. So as you can see, we got very neutral pose here on the side, kind of like an idol. And then we got this very cool effect where the tentacles start kind of like floating to the side because of the movement of the head. And then we like let those tentacles kind of like rest a little bit right there. I'm probably going to change it just a little bit here on the main tentacle. And then look at this, like a very intense pose on this side when the whole tentacles are going to be moving on the other direction. Tentacles, tails, all of those things are very important too to know how to do properly. Um, so yeah, this is this is looking good. Again, I'm probably just gonna fix a couple of little things and now I'm gonna show you how to do the overlap.
Now, to do the overlaps, what we want is we want to create a little bit of, you know, extra movement, extra swing on the tentacles. So we're going to be adding something that we call the secondary like poses or, or the in-between. Sometimes you, you refer or you, you will hear these things be referred as in-betweens. So for instance, on this first kind of like movement right here, if we just leave this thing exactly like it is, what's going to happen is the tentacles are just going to like kind of like settle into space and then they're going to start their acceleration on this side. But what's usually going to happen is after this thing kind of like settles right around, I would say there, the tentacles are going to continue moving a little bit to the other side. So I'm going to grab all of these tentacles right here. I'm going to add a secondary pose to the tentacles only. OK, I'm going to add a secondary pose where the tentacles kind of like swing to the other direction. And what that will do is we'll have a very soft swing of the tentacles going like this. Okay, let's grab this one right here. This is where, again, having like multiple quick sets might be a good idea. We're just seeing the rotation. Thanks to the fact that all of the rotations are aligned, it's very easy to just like rotate them based on the camera position, as you can see right here. Grab this inner tentacle. And we're also going to kind of like it in a little bit, trying to avoid overlap if possible. And there we go. So what's going to happen here is that the tentacles are going to swing a little bit to the other side, and then they're going to swing back into position, right, into this sort of like rest position before they get this like super big swing to the side. Now on this big swing, again, I would not expect the tentacles, as soon as the head stops, I would not expect the tentacles to stop right here. Eventually the tentacles are gonna stop back into this position, but I want this to be a little bit faster. So I'm gonna press a middle mouse, I'm gonna select all of the curves right here, I'm gonna press middle mouse and move this to frame 98. And then what this is gonna do, of course, is we're gonna have two points right here. And then frame 90, what I'm gonna do again is I'm gonna grab all of the tentacles, let's deselect all of the other elements, and we're gonna push the tentacles to the side like this, okay? So this will do a swing of the tentacles, and then let's say frame 93, the tentacles are gonna swing a little bit more to this side, a little bit more, but again, a little bit less, and then over here, we're gonna do a little bit more over here, and this thing finally settles right here. Now, just to add a little bit of movement to the head, because we do have this extra frame, I'm just gonna move the head a little bit here, and we can even add like, um, I don't know, some animation here to the to the eye. So this guy's right here. Let's make him go, you know, a little bit angry. I grab this guy right here. Like push it forward. I know we're not doing like like super complex facial animation, but I just want to have like a like an effect right there. And now again, if we take a look at the animation, this is what we have. The character moves to one side moves to the other one, and this guy's just like, starts spinning. Now, I definitely see that the spin right there at the end is very, very fast. So let me show you how we can fix that. I'm gonna give myself a little bit more frames right here. Let's go to frame 120. And I know that this things look good, but the scale is a little bit too, too fast, right? So from this point right here, it's a very fast swing. You can just like grab one of the things and, and increase the scale like we've done before. But there's another trick here. I'm going to select this whole thing. I'm just going to scale the frames, scale the keyframes. This is going to give me a little bit more time. And then I can grab this one, for instance, give myself a little bit more time. Usually on the swings, the first swings are going to be kind of like slow and then they become a little bit like faster. Actually. No, it's actually, they're going to be very fast and they're, they're going to become a little bit slower. So this one right here, I'm going to get it a little bit closer. This one a little bit closer. And then the final swing, as you can see, is going to be a little bit small. So it's fast, fast, and then slow. Now, see this dotted line right there? That's very important. That means that the frame is not falling exactly on a keyframe. So instead of being on frame, let's say 100, it's on frame 100.0, whatever. So you don't want that. Just grab everything again here with shift and right click snap. This is going to snap them back to the position. So now, as you can see, the swing is going to be a little bit uh, like softer. So one side, the other side, and there we go. I still feel like it looks a little bit too intense. So I'm going to give myself a little bit more scale again, right click and snap. And that should allow me to, to get it something that looks a little bit nicer. OK, a little bit better. I still feel it's a little bit too fast. So I'm going to give myself a little bit more space, probably like a like a couple of frames. Let's give ourselves just a couple more keyframes here. And again, this is all very, again, rough animation that we're doing. Usually an animation for a game is going to take you a long time. It's impossible for me to show you the full animation process in like 20, 30 minutes that we've been working. So, so make sure you take your time when you're doing this. There we go. That looks a little bit better. So one, two, 
And there we go. Cool. Now, what else can we do? Well, I'm going to grab the whole thing again. I'm going to go to the graph editors. And again, I'm going to give them a spline. I'm just going to soften up a couple of the extra keyframes that we added. And this is definitely going to, I'll want to hide the curves. This is definitely going to make sure that things look a little bit better. But we have a problem with the tentacles, and this is where we're going to talk about overlap. The tentacles are all moving like a single effect, so it kind of looks like a, like a spring sort of effect. If we want to add a little bit more, you know, oomph to the whole thing, what we need to do is we need to delay the movement of the tentacles. And this is a very simple method, again, simple and easy way to, to get some extra animation right there. So we know that all of the tentacles have an animation right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab not the first one, but the second part of the tentacle, on all of the tentacles, another way in which you can do it, just grab everything and start deselecting things right here. So let's deselect the top tentacles right there. And all of these tentacles, this new selection that we have, which is the, the secondary part of the, of the tentacles, pretty much. There we go. We are going to offset it by two keyframes. So I'm going to grab all of these guys right here. I'm going to move them one, two times. There we go. Two keyframes. So now what's happening is it's kind of like we're breaking the chain. So instead of the whole chain moving at the same time, we're adding this sort of movement where this element moves first, then this one, this, this one, and then this one. But they all remain in the same position that we had in the original animation. Now I'm going to deselect two of the curves from each tentacle like this. And all of the keyframes, I'm going to move them two more keyframes. One, two. And I'm going to deselect the next two. Grab all of the keyframes, one, two. And finally, we grab the last like little piece right here, just leaving the, the very tip of the, of the tentacles, and one and two. So what that will do is that it will create this sort of like stair step effect on all of our keyframes. And now when we see the animation, the animation is going to look a lot softer. Why? Because even though we're getting to the exact same point that we had before, we are doing it slightly offsetting the times. And what that will do, as you can see right there, it's going to give me this very like mushy sort of like a free flowing effect on the tentacles. So yeah, <laughs> I guess that's it, my friends. With this done, I can just turn on the uh, light information, of course. We do have some light here with, uh, with um, Arnold. And um, even though it's a very simple animation, hopefully this shows you some of the basic principles that we need to follow when we're animating a character to, you know, give that little bit of extra realism. Again, an animation for production is not going to take this amount of time. This is just a quick overview of the process. Right now, we're working on a, on a, on a studio or on a project on the studio and we're animating i think it's like two minutes of animation and we've been spending it's like two or three artists working on it for like a month so yeah it's it's tough animation is definitely tough but if you understand the principles if you apply these principles to your character you're going to be able to generate something that looks very very cool so yeah that's pretty much it for this one my friends if you like this series please let me know and again remember these files are available for free to check out in gumroad and if you want to learn of course more about our content here in the channel we have premium courses available on the links down below. That's it for this one, my friends. Thank you very much. I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.